So for my primary and sec secondary survey, first I want to do a scene survey. So i am be looking for fire wire, gas, glass, anything that could hurt me or um, could affect how I can give care to somebody. Um, I would want to have a face mask and gloves on as my PPE. Um, you also want to see if there's any other people around, if there's any um, other things that could have caused the injury. Um, it also, did you see the MOI? Um, sometimes you, if you didn't see the M MOI, you have to look to the environment to see what might have happened or give you some clues about what happened. Um, you're also looking to see how many people are injured. If there's just one person, then you can treat them. But if there's multiple, you might have to triage what's worse, who's worse off. Um, uh, you'd have to prioritize life over limb. Um, if somebody is unconscious, then definitely you want to take care of them over somebody that has a few cuts or bruises. Um, and then if there are a bunch of people, then you might need additional resources, additional people to help. Um, if you see a very obvious fracture, then you know immediately that you need probably a splint bag and some extra resources other than just your fanny pack. Um, when you're approaching, you wanna see, are they conscious? Um, when you're approaching, you wanna make sure that they can see you and you identify yourself. So if they're laying on the ground and you think it might be a spinal, uh, place your hand on your head, say, please don't move, I'm Madison, I'm a sport first responder, can I help you? Make sure that you get their consent before you start treating. Um, you want to see how old they are, because um, if they're a child versus an adult, um, their like respiratory rate and blood pressure might be slightly different. Um, do they seem like they're in a lot of pain? Are they in distress? Are they screaming? Are they silent? Um, what's their body position like? Are they laying on their back? Are they lying on their side? Are they grabbing their knee? Something like anything like that. Um, that could kind of give you an idea of what might be wrong. Are they conscious? Are they unconscious? Stuff like that. Um, ask them like what happened? What might be wrong? Um, what hurts is always a good in question. Where's the pain? Um, and if it's super major trauma, like the spinal or even a major fracture, you might want to say, hey, please don't move. Um, please try to stay still as much as you can. If they're unconscious, then you want to see, um, go through level of consciousness. Um, and are they alert? Are they verbal? Do they respond to pain or are they unresponsive? So verbal, you could like uh, speak in their ears, say, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, pain, you could press on the nail beds, you could um, external rub, you could pinch your, uh, pinch traps or triceps, sorry. Um, yeah, kind of see if they would respond. Um, if they're unresponsive, then you call 911 and try to stabilize and proceed with your ABCs. Make sure that they're airways open so if you think it's a c-spine then you want to do a jaw thrust if you know that it's not a c-spine and they're just unconscious then you can do head tilt chin uh yeah <laughs> head tilt chin lift make sure you take the mouth guard out before you do that <laughs> if you're in a sport like football um might uh interfere with being able to for them to breathe um then after that you want to do breathing so uh, bring your head down to into their um, mouth you can feel their breath on your cheek you can also while you're there watch the rise and fall of their chest um you can also listen see if you hear any breathing um that too um if they're not breathing then you want to start cpr there you also want to check to make sure there's no deadly bleeding so if there's a major um, uh, laceration on their thigh, for example, and they're just spurting blood, you want to make sure that there's pressure on that and start CPR. If you start CPR, then blood will just continue spurting out of the uh, laceration if you don't take care of that. Um, circulation, you can check radial pulse. Um, you could also check um, like carotid pulse or femoral, uh, whichever works better. Um, for five to ten seconds, probably, that would be best. Um, and if you think 
and you can't find a radial pulse or if they're not breathing then you check carotid um and uh, after that you could check skin color you could check temperature how, how does their skin feel does it look weird um does it seem really clammy sweaty like does it feel different um after that bleeding um and fluid loss um <coughs> sorry uh are they bleeding anywhere serious like out of the thigh or um uh anywhere there's a major artery or vein um also is there fluid like uh, uh spinal fluid coming out of the nose or ears something like that um can you check for uh like raccoon eyes battle signs stuff like that um if they're not breathing then you can go get an aed and start cpr um call it ems first though you want to make sure that they're on their way and then you start cpr um if it's non-life-threatening then you can just stabilize and continue on with your secondary um secondary survey so secondary survey you want to do your um vital signs so um pre uh, uh, prestal bp so pulse respiratory rate eyes um skin color time level of consciousness bp so um checking that that radio pulse or carotid pulse um respiratory rate just kind of observing how much how often they're breathing um you can assume bp through systolic or um you can assume systolic pressure sorry um through uh, pulse so a uh, carotid artery is 60 um at least 60 uh millimeters per of mercury um femoral 70 and carotid is 90 or radial is 90 sorry um blood pressure normally for an adult is 120 over 80 as a child it's slightly lower and it varies depending on the age group um, then you can go into history if they're conscious. You could ask signs and symptoms, um, allergies, medications, uh, past history um, of the injury, uh, last oral intake, and events leading up. You can also ask OPQRST, which is onset of pain, uh, provoking a pain, quality of pain, um, radiating severity and time. Um, you should do your head still exam here. So you want to try to expose and palpate any of the injuries that you, you can see. Um, also looking for injuries you might not be able to see on first glance. Um, checking the head, you wanna look for spinal fluid or blood anywhere. Um, eyes, nose, ears, if there's any like cranial bleeding, there could be a cranial fracture, stuff like that. Um, you can also look for raccoon eyes or battle signs um, through there too. So battle signs, raccoon eyes. Um, you could also look for, um, any obvious, like, bony abnormalities, so you can palpate through the bones of the head, so feeling the cranium and th feeling through the ma mandible and maxilla. Um, then after that, you can go into the neck, so you want to look at the seven, or, uh, yep, sp seven spinous processes. Um, you also look at jugular distension and, um tracheal deviation if it's off to one side then it means that air is not getting into both lungs um you can also feel through the trachea the spinous processes and feel through all the muscles around here see if there's any guarding or um abnormal muscle tone if it's only a uh, tense on one side versus the other um you can also then move on to shoulders so you're looking at the scapulae and the collarbone so I'm feeling along the collarbones, feeling if there's any um, obvious bony abnormalities, any obvious breaks, crepitus, anything like that. Feeling through the um, scapula as well, um, along the back, along the spine of the scapula. Is there any pain with that? Is it feel weird, crunchy, crepitus, anything like that? Um, with chest, you want to listen for like deep breaths. Is there any pain? Is does it sound weird is there like flapping um you also want to feel along the ribs and along the sternum for any fractures or anything like that um ask them if it's painful and 
if it hurts right here and you put some pressure here, that could indicate a fracture further down. Um, you can move on to the or abdomen. So you want to feel the four quadrants of the, the abdomen. Make sure that there's no um, rigidity. Uh, if there's any tenderness, to you can pull up the shirt, see if there's any like obvious bruising or anything like that. Um, if there's any distension also, um, which means blood pooling in the abdomen. Um, pelvis, you could feel along the um, all parts of the pelvis, really. Um, feeling for any fractures, compressing, seeing if you can create any painful reactions just to see if there is any fractures. But you want to make sure that you're careful because it's a very sensitive area. Um, make sure that you want to look for any incontinence or um, defecation too, um, which could indicate a spinal injury further up um, because they've lost control of their bowel, bowel and bladder. Um, moving down, you could go to the uh, femur, compress along the femoral shaft, um, palpate for any obvious um, abnormalities, feel through the knee, th through the uh, patella, and the femoral heads and the tibial heads, fibular. Um, then you can move along the tibia down to the ankle. Once you get to the ankle, you can feel the uh, medial and lateral malleoli. Into the foot, you can feel the um, fifth metatarsal, the head of the fifth metatarsal and the um, navicular too. Um, you want to just check and make sure that there are no obvious fractures there or dislocations. Um, remember the Ottawa ankle rules too. Um, if there's any pain through there, then it could indicate a fracture and you want to send them for an x-ray. Um, you can also make sure like any motor injuries down there so or circulation. So you could do a um, cap refill check with um, the big toe. You could also just feel skin temperature wise if it feels cold or it looks discolored. Um, that could indicate a, something wrong further up in the system. Um, you could also check motor and sensory, so uh, ask them, can you feel me touching the bottom of your foot? Which toe am I touching? But you don't tell them which one, and they have to tell you which one it is that they think you're touching. And motor, can they wiggle their toes? Can they um, move their ankle at all if there's not an ankle issue? Um, You'd also want to go through the arms, so palpate down the uh, humerus, check the elbow, is there any obvious problems with um, the lateral collateral ligament and the ulnar collateral ligament, um, feel the bicep, tricep, brachioradialis, some of the flexor extensor muscles down into the forearm, check the uh, ulna and radius into the wrist, check if there's any pain with the scaphoid. Um, and kind of in that snuff box area and palpate through the wrist. And then you want to feel through the hand too, along the um, metacarpals and then through the phalanges, see if they're okay. You can also do uh, motor sensory and cap refill here too. Make sure that uh, circulation's still good and they have control of their hands. I do that before moving down uh, to, through the legs and feet. That's it.